One of the most beautiful, disturbing, fascinating, and highly interesting, and I think you'll find it interesting too, topics and something that you come to discover as you get older is the fact that throughout your relationships later on in life, any unhealed wounds and trauma that you experienced as a child or when you were still young and developing in the environment that you're around, those situations that are unhealed and you haven't really taken the time to fully examine and address some of those inner hidden demons or the shadow side of ourselves, those things actually get replayed to us later on in life, especially in our relationships. Now, this is going to be an extremely eye-opening video, so I really need you to pay attention and watch all the way through to the end because I know for a fact you can relate to this and it's something that we as men have all dealt with, especially if you're watching content like this, more than likely you've dealt with an experience where you've dated a woman or you've been with a woman in the past that pretty much dug into an unhealed or unresolved traumatic issue that was unresolved when you were young. And now that's being replayed to you as you're older and what you're having to do is address that. For me, for example, I had a lot of unhealed trauma and wounds around my dad leaving my mom when I was young and bouncing back and forth between households. And because I didn't have all the time with my dad, what I would do is I would people please. So whenever I'd visit him, the rare occasion that I would, it would be like I would people please and try to you know, show him that I was doing well in school, I was being a really good athlete, I was trying my best at basketball, soccer, all the sports I played when I was little, and like love me, love me, love me, like I was literally begging and asking for his love and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that as well you know if you have an absent parent or a parent that necessarily doesn't you feel like they don't love you unless you perform well for them you're going to pander and cater to that parent so that they'll eventually have some love for you it's a really toxic style of relationship and because I never fully healed that trauma with my dad and it's something that we still haven't really addressed that much we've gotten better over the years um, we just haven't been like a communicative, we don't have a communicative relationship. And I'm sure a lot of you guys can also relate to that with your dads out there. You know, it's difficult because his dad wasn't a great communicator with him. Therefore, when the situation happened with my family, he's not a great communicator with me. I'm struggling with communication. The reason I'm able to talk and do these videos like this, cause I force myself to communicate. I myself, am a very shy person. And this is uncomfortable for me and I have a lisp, I have all these speech impediments, but I've had to work on this and force myself to challenge my brain and come out of my shell, all right? Like pull myself out. We've talked about this a lot on the channel. That's something a lot of you young guys, if you're wanting to get out of your shell, you're wanting to experience the best in life and see your true growth and who you can really be, you have to put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Me even talking like this, putting myself out there with all these stories, on YouTube, it's extremely like nerve wracking. This is something I never would want to do, but I know that there's a need for it. And because I was so crippling depressed with all the terrible stuff that happened to me when growing up, I know that I have to share this information because even if it just hits one or two people, I know that I can save a life. So that's why I do it. It also helps me with my business too, because I have to communicate. Anyways, that's besides the point. So because as a little kid, I'll pop a picture up of myself right now. I was a nerdy little kid, right? I had no social skills, I had Asperger's, I have ADHD, just a total wreck, <laughs> totally insecure with myself, also really tall at my age, like freakishly tall, so I just totally out of place, and I was a nerd. So it's just like one thing after the other, it was really awkward for me growing up, and I was not comfortable at all, and I was a people pleaser. And I learned a lot of that because of my relationship that I had with my inner circle or my family at the time, and what that translated into later on was me looking and seeking for approval from women. So what ended up happening was when I would go to school, when I would first start talking to girls when I was little, I would look for girls that were sort of like attractive to me that I really liked. Actually, no, they were extremely attractive to me, but subconsciously, I knew that they were sort of out of my league, right? So they were these really attractive, maybe popular girls that didn't have these social issues and everyone got along with. I'm this nerdy little skinny kid um, that's so socially awkward, has is on the spectrum low key, and I'm over here trying to talk to her and get in a relationship with her when that woman is going to eventually hurt me and distance herself from me enough 
to where it creates a dynamic of where I'm people pleasing with her, trying to get her approval and her validation, just like I was doing not even that long ago when I was a little kid with my dad in that situation. So I know that if you're watching this video, you more than likely can relate to that. Think about it in your past, maybe um, 15 to 20 years ago, based on the environment you grew up in. I have no idea of knowing what environment you grew up in household, but I'm assuming that you probably had something similar like that. If you have a history of maybe dating women that you know you were people pleasing for, or just even a friend circle that you were people pleasing for, and you pretty much sacrificed what was in your best interest for the interest of someone else. And you know, a lot of guys in this space, and I saw a comment that said this earlier, we are empaths, which basically means we have a big, big freaking heart, okay? So we wear our heart on our sleeves. We're very emotionally vulnerable if we put ourselves in those positions. And a lot of us came to this space online because we wore our heart on our sleeves, especially early on in life, and we had it ripped out of our freaking chest, right? Our soul was taken by that demonic 304. So you just, just ripped out our chest like Mortal Kombat style and just, just started eating it. And because me, you, that's watching this video, we've grown up, maybe our mom was an empath too and our dad was a narcissist. We've grown up seeing these relationship dynamics play out. And therefore, because it's an unhealed wound from our childhood, we go on to grow up and replay those exact same scenarios again and again and again because life is literally like a video game. You don't pass to the next level because there's always levels to this until you heal that previous wound. And in this case, we're talking about the wound of being a people pleaser and an empath to the wrong types of women and people in general. So this pattern will play out not just with women, it will play out with your friends, You'll be the friend that's constantly trying to make plans, that has, you see, remembers your friend's birthdays, tries to make an effort to call them, keep in contact, constantly just pouring out of yourself. You will, bend, you will go through hell for your friends pretty much to show them that you care, to maybe get them a job, to get them on the right track, to help them with their bad habits, to just give them a book that might change their life but they're constantly just draining you of your resources, distracting you, kind of putting you down when you're doing things. And that can be, once again, that could be a narcissistic relationship that you're not seeing that goes all the way back to your childhood. So what I want you to do with this information, now that you understand these things, it is our responsibility to do something about this because you might have not known this before that this was happening, but now we, we both have a clear understanding of what's going on. So what I want you to do is take a moment after this video is over, pause and look back at your life, think about your childhood and think about are, am I replaying these negative situations and scenarios over and over and over again in present time, all right? Is my current relationship or the relationship that just ended with my ex or my, the friends I'm around, the, the, my coworkers, the people I hang out with the most of my time now, is that a similar replay of a scenario that's happened in my childhood that I maybe have not healed? I want you guys to go back, reflect on this, take your time. You're going to dig up some pretty nasty things. I know I did personally, but take like 10 minutes even before you go to bed at night. Just think about it, all right? Or right after this video. The sooner you do it, the better because it'll be fresher in your mind. So if you do it right after this video, it'll be life-changing. I love you all. I hope this video was a lot of value for you. I try to bring more value to me, my videos and just give you guys as much information and content packed in the small amount of time as possible that YouTube allows me so that you guys get the most out of this. If you enjoy content like this, drop a like, hit that subscribe button. I love you all. Stay blessed. Oh yeah, and share this video with anyone that might need it and let me know in your comment section below what scenarios that might have played out when you were younger are playing out now because of an unhealed experience. Let's share our thoughts. Let's encourage each other. Let's not judge. Let me know what you guys think.